Welcome to part four of the Tracing Without Tears series. If you're just now tuning in, I encourage you to check out the first three videos so you can have some context for what we are doing today. Our topic for this video is tracing for print and cut, but we'll start with the Hello Kitty image we traced in the last video because I want to show you that any cutting file can be used as print and cut. We kept an assembled version of our Hello Kitty here, but if you don't have an assembled version, you just drag the pieces into place. You can even recolor them or add patterns. And then you need to go to the Cut Styles window. You want to select everything and then just click Cut Edge. And there you can see that it will cut just around the outside. And it's as easy as that to turn any cut file into a print and cut. If we have a normal graphic like this one from Lettering Delights and we need a cut line for print and cut, we would do our normal tracing procedure. And instead of pushing the trace button, we would press trace outer edge. And you can see there that it just traces the outer edge. But there's a trick we use here so that we can make up for some of the inaccuracy of the machine, and that's just to use a rectangle and color it the same color as the outer edge. We're going to use the eyedropper tool and pick up the color we want to have. And we're going to send that to the back and then when we set our cut styles we'll set the outer one to no cut and you'll see that when that cuts they have there's plenty of extra room so that if this is a little bit off, instead of getting white space, you'll have that coral color and it will look as if you cut it in exactly the right place, even if your machine is a little bit off. Now, in this case, a rectangle doesn't waste much ink, but sometimes the shape, instead of doing a rectangle, you'll want to just do an offset of the outer shape in order to give yourself what we call a bleed area. Next, I'm excited to show you the mysterious Trace and Detach button. Trace and Detach does several things all at once. We start out like a normal trace and when we click the Trace and Detach button it's going to trace the outer edge then use that path to cut through the image below like a cookie cutter detaching each closed piece from the larger bitmap image it's similar to cropping, except the negative piece remains. So let me show you what that looks like. How about that? Now, we can turn on Cut Edge and we have a page of print and cuts that we can now move around and make sure that we fit in to the page boundaries. For instance, one reason we might want to do this so that we don't have anything printing in the cross hatches and so on. I'm not sure this is all that practical, but it does have a certain G-Wiz factor. Okay, here's a typical vintage style image that you might be using for print and cut. It's representative of any image with a fairly detailed outline, but that you still want it to be smooth. And I'm going to use this to show you when we might want to use the low pass filter. And we're going to talk about the filters more. And this is going to be kind of hard to see. So we're going to turn off our high pass filter. We're going to set our threshold. And I'm going to set the slow pass filter about one and a half. I've already played with this a little to know where I think it should go. If you look closely, when I turn this low pass filter on and off, you should notice some smoothing of the outer line. I don't know how well you can see that. But with the low pass filter on, you still get a nice trace close to the edge, but 
you get about half as many nodes as you would get with the low pass filter off in a case like this. So you get a nice smoother line and a smaller file size. Now here's another problem we run into is when your edge is, is broken, when it's not a solid edge. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I have a whole separate video on this already on my blog. You would just approach this like you would any other trace. Select the trace area, turn off your high pass filter, and do a trace outer edge. And you'll see that you get a trace that's still too detailed for what we want. But we're going to click on this. We're going to go to our offset tool, which is this one that has a square and an arrow. We're going to click offset. And I'm going to bring this number down. What I'm looking for is for all of the outer outline to remain unbroken, but I want it as small as possible and still unbroken. So right there, I see it's breaking a little bit, so I'm going to go one click out from there. Two clicks. Let's see. I think it's completely solid there. And I'm going to click Apply. Okay, so that's my original. This is my offset. All right, now what I'm going to do to simplify that, and this is a trick you can use to, to anytime you want to simplify something that has internal detail, you go Release Compound Path, then you select it all, and then you go Weld. Boom. Quick and easy. And it leaves things where, where they belong. Okay, so now I can put my girl back there, and you'll see that I have a nice outline. But maybe I didn't want a white space. Maybe I, I wanted uh, to go right up next to her. So if I did, I can click on the outline, which was an offset, remember. Let me do this, go in closer. Now, the only thing tricky about this is selecting what you want. And you have to select, you have to click right on that line to get it. And sometimes you have to try a few times. And the reason you'll know is because if I'm clicking on the image, its borders are, are way out to the side, and if I'm clicking the offset, the borders are in. Click on internal offset, and you can see it's bringing that second line down closer, and I can go up on that because that's going to make it go further in. And I can just look at this and see that looks pretty good. I can click apply, and now I can get rid of my outer one. If I can click on that, you'll see I have a cut line. Turn this this one off. That's right in next to my girl. So do an offset and then do an inner offset to make disconnected lines come together. Now we talked about using trace outer edge for our print and cuts, but sometimes we have an image where we want more than just the outer edge. Let's say on this bicycle girl, we also want the inside of the bike and between her arms here to cut out. We don't want the wheels to cut out. We're selective about what we want. So just doing a trace outer edge isn't going to work. We'll have to do a trace, but then we'll have too much detail. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to Release Compound Path, and then I'm going to select the details that I want to keep, the inside piece on the bike, the inside piece on the arm, the other inside piece on the arm. I'm going to select those, and then I'm going to select the overall outline. And if you remember my technique from the other video, I'm going to select just outside of that to click that. So now that I've got those four pieces selected, I'm going to make, make them a compound path. So now that I've got them a compound path, I'm going to just drag that out of the way and delete the rest. And now our girl has a cut, a cut line that is just perfect. And it was as easy as that. So I hope that helps you out with your traces for print and cut. Thanks for watching and uh, make sure you check back. There's more videos to come.